Hey there everybody. As promised, I'm back with another tutorial. This tutorial is geared towards learning basic single area OSPF. I decided to make this tutorial more comprehensive and give you those who are interested a hands-on option. Please refer to the video description for links to the lab documentation and packet tracer file. Now, I'm going to quickly run through the basics of what we're going to cover. Today we're going to learn how to configure OSPF in a point-to-point -point and multi-axis environment. We're going to observe the OSPF designated router and backup designated router election by analyzing debug outputs. We're going to modify OSPF interface priority values to force the DR and BDR election. We're going to learn how to do default route propagation. We're going to modify link bandwidth and cost to manipulate how OSPF routes traffic. We're going to introduce OSPF authentication into the area. Here's a brief overview of the policy we're going to be using today. The network consists of five routers in, in the OSPF area 0. The multi-axis network has been given an address of 20.0.0.0. The point-to-point -point networks have been given an address by subnetting the 10.0.0.0 network. The local area off Tampa has a, has a network address of 192.168.1.0 and the local area network off West Palm has been assigned a network address of 192.168.10.0. Off to the right you can see the ISP's network with an address of 99.0.0.0. Since time is limited, all the routers have been pre-configured with the basics. Please refer to step 1 and 2 in the LabCamp documentation to see the basic configurations. We are now going to configure OSPF on all the routers participating in the area. Let's start with Miami. To configure OSPF on a router, you must type the command router OSPF1 from global configuration mode. This command lets the router know we want to configure the routing protocol OSPF with the process ID of 1. Once the command is issued, you can see that the prompt changes from Miami config pound sign to Miami config hyphen router pound sign. Now that the OSPF routing process is active, we have to issue the network command which instructs OSPF on which networks it needs to advertise. Remember, we have to advertise all the networks that are directly connected to us if we want those networks to be reachable by others. The syntax for the command is as follows. Network, space, the network we want to advertise, space, the wildcard mask of the network, and the area which it belongs to, which in our case is area 0. Since Miami is connected to 20.0.0 network and the 1032.0.0 network, each need to have their own statements. As a side note, when working with subnet and networks, it's important that you advertise a subnet that you are connected to directly and not the entire network. For example, in this case, if you were to advertise a 10.0.0.0 network as a whole, with the submitted wildcard mask of 0.31.255.255, OSPF will not route traffic. Now, I'll click quickly configure the other routers for OSPF, and then I will verify connectivity across the network. That's Orlando. Let's go ahead and configure Tampa. Tampa. Let's go ahead and configure Daytona. Okay, that's Daytona. And now let's go ahead and configure the West Palm router. Okay. I am not going to test connectivity across the network. Test connectivity, I will issue a series of pings from Daytona to Miami and then to the laptops of Tampa and West Palm. I will also run a sh show IP route on Tampa to see the routing table entries and verify that OSPF is working properly. To begin, we're going to go ahead and ping Miami's 20.0.0.1 interface. As you can see, that ping was successful. We're going to go ahead and ping the 192.168.1.2, just a laptop of Tampa. That was successful. And we're going to ping the 192.168.1, sorry, the 10.2, to just the laptop of West Palm, and that's successful. We're going to go ahead and move over to the Tampa router, and we're going to issue a show IP route command. And as you can see, we have three routing table entries, all being discovered through OSPF for the 10.32, the 64, and the 96 networks. The 20.0 network is directly connected to us. The 30.0 network is directly connected to us because it's our loopback addresses. We have the 192.168.1.0, which is directly connected to us. And then we have the LAN off West Palm, which is the 192.168.10.0. It's being discovered over our SPF. 
We're going to enable OSBF event debugging on Tampa by issuing the debug IP OSBF events command. Please make sure that you have saved your running configuration to your startup configuration by issuing either the copy run start or write command from privilege exec mode. If you do not save the configuration and reload the routers, you will lose your entire config. Let's go ahead and issue the debug IP OSBF events command. And as you can see, OSBF event debugging is on now. After you're sure your configurations are saved, we can go ahead and reload the routers in the multi-axis network by issuing the reload command. The debug output that Tampa is going to generate will allow us to observe the DR slash BDR election process. So let's go ahead and hit the reload on Tampa. We're going to ahead and hit the reload on Miami. And we're gonna go ahead and hit the reload on Orlando. Alrighty, we're back to Tampa. Tampa is up and running. Okay. So as when the routers come back online again, they will try to establish adjacencies with each other by sending out hello packets. As soon as all the routers are, t are talking and the final relation has been, has been held, we can turn off all debugging by typing the unall command, which turns off all possible debugging on the routers. So now we're going to go ahead and give it a minute and it should start providing us some output. There we go, starting to provide us with some output. Okay, let's double check. Okay. Now we can go ahead and turn off all the possible debugging. If we scroll up to the top of the debug output, we can see that the router held the DR slash BDR election on its fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface. It elected the BDR first to be itself, then it also elected the DR to be itself since there was nobody else active sending hello packets on the line. On interface fast Ethernet is zero slash one. It did the same since there's no other router available to to have the elections with. It is the DR, and there is no BDR. As soon as it release, it receives a hello packet from Miami. It sends a database descriptor packet, and it also detects that there's a neighbor change event, and it goes ahead and selects. Miami as the BDR and itself as the DR. Let's see. As soon as it receives a hello packet from Orlando, you can see that it also sends a database descriptor packet to Orlando and then it re it reestablishes the election process. It elects Orlando as a BDR, it elects itself as a DR. And then it goes through the process again until it reaches the full state. Yep, as you can see, the election process has gone through. Now if we have inspected the debug output, we can issue the show IP OSPF neighbor command. Uh, with this we can verify that Orlando is the BDR and Miami is the DR other and thus this makes Tampa the DR. So let's go ahead and issue the show IP OSPF neighbor command and as you can see we have Miami with an address of 30.0.0.11 as a full state and it's considered the DR other and then you have Orlando with an address of 30.0.0.22 its state is full and it's a backup designated router.